Let us now try and understand the types of derivatives that are there in the financial markets or in the derivatives market. Well, actually, there are several different kinds of derivatives in uh, financial markets, and some of them are extremely complex. Okay. Uh, however, the good thing is that all derivatives that are trading in financial markets can be broadly classified under three categories, and they are forward contracts of futures, options, and swaps. So basically, all derivatives that are there in financial markets are either variants, that means there are some modification of these uh, basic derivatives, or they are a combination of these uh, basic derivatives. So you can have a complex derivative, which is a combination of an option and a swap. Uh, you can have a complex derivative, which is a, a modification of the futures contract along with the modification of the swap. So all derivatives that are there in financial markets uh, will broadly fall under these three categories. Okay. Now, uh, over the course of this lecture series, we are going to try and understand these two financial derivatives, that is forward contracts of futures and options. Uh, we aren't going to go much into the details in swaps and uh, you won't be needing swaps as a retail investor as well because in India, as a retail investor, you cannot really uh, participate in the swaps uh, market or in the swap derivatives market. So basically what you can participate as a retail investor in uh, Indian financial markets and Indian derivatives market will be either forward contract would be either futures or options. So we will cover these two derivatives very closely in this lecture series. Okay. Now there are several different kinds of option contracts that are there in financial markets. Uh, you have option contracts like American options, European options, Asian options. Uh, there are several different kinds of options and uh, we will also cover a few of these different uh, categories of options. But one thing that is common to all different categories of options are that they both have an option to sell and an option to buy. The option to buy is called a call option and the option to sell is called a put option. Okay, so any option, whatever be the category, will always have a call option and a put option. Okay, so this is your first introduction to options. We'll, of course, get into much more details about this in later videos. Uh, so this is how the derivatives market is divided, right? Uh, now that we recognize the way the types of derivatives that are there in financial markets, uh, let us also understand uh, the participants in a, in a derivatives market. Who are the people who are participating and what is the purpose and what is the objective of trading in derivatives? Okay. So the participants in a derivatives market uh, can be broadly classified under three categories and they are hedgers, speculators and arbitrages. Uh, hedgers are basically uh, investors or traders who are trading in the derivatives market to reduce their risk. If you've seen my uh, video where I showed how a farmer and a baker were uh, exchanging, were got into a derivatives contract to reduce their risk, well, that is basically what hedgers are trying to do. Hedgers participate in the derivatives market to reduce their risk. And it is possible as we have seen in one example. Speculators do the exact opposite actually. They take on risk, okay? And that's where derivatives can get extremely risky as well because uh, derivatives are, are products which if you want, you can take much more risk uh, than uh, you know, simply going and buying the underlying asset, right? So what speculators do is that they have a view or they have an opinion about the price or the value of an underlying asset and based on the price or the value of the underlying asset, they form an opinion about the value or price of the derivative contract that is being traded. And they try and profit from their speculative assumptions. Okay, So they make a, an assumption, they may have an opinion, uh, and the opinion could be that something, some uh, the value of some product will probably go up or value of some asset will come down. And they will 
position themselves in the derivatives market to make profit out of this movement. Of course, this is a risky strategy where if their opinion is wrong, they can end up losing a lot of money. The final uh, category of participants in the derivatives market are arbitragers. Now, what arbitragers try to do is that they try and make riskless profit. Okay. Uh, to understand this, let us first have a, a brief idea of what is. Let me let me give you a brief idea of what is arbitrage. Well, the technical financial definition of arbitrage is that it is the opportunity to simultaneously buy and sell same or similar cash flows to make riskless profit. Now, of course, this uh, uh, definition might become a, a bit uh, complicated for you. But let me explain this to you in simple words. Let us suppose there are two markets where you can buy and sell gold. So you can do both things, buy and sell gold. But the thing about these two markets is that they are quoting you two different prices to buy and sell gold. So in market A, you can buy or sell gold at 30,000 rupees per 10 grams. However, in market B, you can buy and sell gold at 31,000 per 10 grams. Okay, so the price is different in both these markets. If an arbitrager sees this, what he will immediately try and do is that he will go and buy the gold from market A and sell the gold at market B. So basically, he's buying the, a, a particular cash flow or well, let's not get into cash flow. He's buying a particular asset at a certain price and he's selling the same very asset at a higher price. So what the arbitrager is trying to do is that he is making riskless profit by simply pocketing the difference between the price of gold in these two markets. OK, that is what arbitrage essentially tries to do. Of course, this is a very rudimentary and a simplistic example of an arbitrage. I will, of course, show you a more uh, you know, realistic example of an arbitrage. But the idea behind arbitrage is to make uh, you know, use of price discrepancies. And because arbitrages try to make use of this price discrepancy, the uh, if arbitrages keep going and buying gold from market A and keep going and selling gold at market B, then obviously what's going to happen is that the price of gold in market A is going to go up and the price of gold in market B is going to go down. And this increase and decrease of price is going to happen till the time there is no arbitrage opportunity left. That means the arbitrager cannot make a riskless profit. Hence, what is the arbitrager doing here? The arbitrager is facilitating the process of price discovery. So arbitragers play a very important role in price discovery of derivatives and of assets. I will give you an example now where I show you how exactly an arbitrage opportunity can be exploited using derivatives.